Hey there! Guess what? It's time for VoiceOver Body Shop, and George and I have some great stuff to talk about, but better, we have a great guest. Sean Daly is with us! There you are, Sean. <laughs> Wave and say hi! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Can never fail with that impression. That's very well that, done. <laughs> and that's not easy to do. Welcome to the show. All right. Well, if you've got a question for Sean, like, how the heck did he just do that? Throw it in our chat room. I know Hollywood Jeff Holman is in there uh, monitoring the chat room tonight and get those questions to us. But we got lots of questions for Sean. He probably has a few questions for us. And you probably have a few questions for us. Especially but, now. Especially yeah, why now. Why am I here? What is, Who are you guys? <laughs> <laughs> trying to remember what campaign that was from. Anyway, voiceover body shop is coming up. Right now, don't go away. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Whittem, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions, and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. JMC Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive, from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Good evening. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Woodham. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. <laughs> wow. Another virtual production tonight, Mr. Woodham. We're somehow we're getting it done, despite the fact that we're all by ourselves. At least I know. I I i my fear is that I'm getting too comfortable <laughs> with the setup now. You gotta come back. I have this like <laughs> control room, everything's at the right height. I can, you know, it's just like I've gotten used to this control surface. But I'll tell you, we we uh, it's definitely not the same as when we can be in the same place at the same time. So Yeah, I know. I mean let's work toward that goal, everybody, and wear your damn masks. That's right. Exactly. This couch has become basically a storage area. I <laughs> this thing start to pile up. See, that's the only reason Dan has to clean up the studio. It's, it's, exactly. It's we come in there. That's right. I know how it goes. Well, it's like, you know, it's, my wife has her Mahjong club over. It's like, we got to totally clean the house. They're exactly. only going to be in the living room for crying out loud. But anyway. they, We don't want them to know exactly <laughs> how big of a slob we really are. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Just getting a little punchy here at the Voice yeah, of the Body Shop. It happens. And, you know, how you guys all doing out there, and hopefully things are going well and you're staying healthy and staying safe. And uh, we're here to help you out with your voiceover career, which <laughs> right now could be either very good or very bad, depending on where you are and kind of stuff you do. But, yeah, I would say. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we have a great guest tonight. Here's a guy that we know really well. We, we've we met at conferences, and we talk to each other online, and we see him on Facebook and he always has a lot to say that is probably correct because it's as he, usually pretty right. That's right. Because as he told me today, I learned it all from you guys. So uh, anyway, let's introduce our guest joining us from somewhere between Seattle and Portland, Sean Daly. 
Hey guys, it's great to be here. Great to see you again. Welcome back to the show. So where exactly? Name the town. And maybe I just told you. I, I can't remember. So it's, it's I'm old. Port Orchard. Port. So, there's orchard. a port, and, and I assume there's an orchard somewhere. <laughs> but, but say yeah, that five times fast. Port Orchard. Port Orchard. Port Orchard. Port Orchard. Port Orchard. Maybe a sixth time. I guess it's when you live there, it's easy. Yeah, I suppose so. Well, that's that's where all <laughs> the Washington you're a voiceover. That's right. <laughs> all the Washington apples have to go out from somewhere. Might as well be right. from Port Orchard. Mm -hmm. Anyway, and Walla Walla. <clears throat> where now? Where is Walla Walla? So it's, it's from almost the opposite percentage. of of where I am. I'm kind of on the northwest, hence Pacific Northwest. But that's in the southeast of Washington, like right above Oregon. So, ah. is it's apparently drier and sunnier there because they're in the rain shadow and all that. Ah. As opposed to right on the coast where it's like being in the Northwest. It's perpetually gray, like my soul. Uh, <laughs> which is why I moved from Buffalo to Southern California, where it's perpetually sunny. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Now, the seasonal effectiveness order is real. <laughs> I yeah. think we had one month of summer this year. Oh, that sucks. Well, you still got a whole summer to go ahead of you then. <laughs> Indeed. Anyway, so where are you from originally, or are you originally from there? Well, the majority of where I was from is actually Washington. I was born here, uh, lived in California for like early childhood, and then moved back to Washington, and then spent several years in Japan in Okinawa because my folks were military, uh -huh. then back to Washington, um, and then school, more school, a little bit more school, and then back to Japan to, to teach English and study the webulous world of voiceover. What, what did you do in Japan? Were you teaching English or? Yeah, yeah. So I was part of the, the JET program or Japanese exchange teaching. It's interesting because it says teaching, but we're kind of more like cultural representatives than anything. So there was some incidental teaching going on but they kind of just wanted to experience people from other countries i guess and and kind of improve cultural relations that way <laughs> uh, and the japanese love having foreigners in there and like we must borrow your culture <laughs> so we send him sean daly great he's so friendly and approachable <laughs> <laughs> so how did you how did you get into voiceover and how long you've been doing that uh, I think it's almost eight years. Jeez. So I'm like 26. No, I'm actually 34. And um, so I started doing it after like my first year of teaching after I got my bearings in Nagasaki. I was teaching over there and I had some this thing called disposable income for the first time in my life. And so I started investing in training and equipment and um, worked with uh, Terry Daniel to start with, a friend of the show I know. Um, and then other than that, just kind of spent a lot of time just or so for those of you who don't know japan has some of the most amazing uh like transportation systems anywhere between the buses and the trains and all that and unfortunately my work was like an hour to an hour and a half away and then all the other cities were like two hours away so i just kind of spent all that time listening to podcasts reading voiceover extra like reading paul straquerta's blog and corvo's blog and all that stuff so just kind of using my downtime to really dive headfirst and immerse myself in the world of VO. Yeah. See, I remember, I remember that's what you were in Japan when, I, when you and I started talking. I'm like, what are you doing in Japan? Uh, yeah, and, <laughs> Getting and, an audio console. Yeah, uh, uh, that's but, right. <laughs> Let's get this right. Yeah. See, now, I, the training in Japan, the way they train people on the trains is amazing. And th there was something I saw there that changed the way I drive, which is... They, they have this thing called the pointing system. It's like, when you do this, you've got to set the brake. You've got to do this, you know, do this. And every time you do it, you point. I've done this. I've done that. I've done this. <laughs> I've done that. Which makes a lot of sense when I'm pulling out of the car out of the garage, you know, out, out into the alley, and I have to close the gate. You know, did I close the gate? No, because I go, gate closed. <laughs> never forget. Kinesthetic reinforcement. I dig it. That's what it's called, kinesthetic reinforcement. Outstanding. If it's not, it is now. Yeah. So, <laughs> so what what type of uh, what type of stuff have you been working on? What what's what are your primary genres? Uh, definitely the e-learning corporate narration stuff. But I've done a little bit of everything. I've done some video game stuff. Uh, one of my favorite ones was I did a lot of like Prince Charming 
the characters for this kind of mobile game app and I get to kind of inspire and make teenage girls feel good about themselves by saying, you're the most beautiful princess tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm convinced. <laughs> oh, everyone's hearts just melted just a little bit. But um, but yeah, that, that was a wonderful gig. Uh, I did multiple um, projects for, and then um, got to be in a couple cartoons last year. That was really fun. Um, and then, but yeah, uh, kind of dipping my toe in audiobooks. George recently helped me with a, uh, getting an audiobook stack set up for that. And um, if this quarantine continues, I have enough time to work on that. So um, so yeah, like I said, just kind of take whatever they'll give me, really. Well, that's, and that's voiceover, by the way, guys. You know, yeah, it ain't glamorous, but better than ditch digging. <laughs> or as a friend of mine used to say, better than a sharp stick in the eye. Oh God, <laughs> a lot of things are better than that. <laughs> that that's, that's true. Um, yeah, voiceover is an interesting place to be because you, there are so many genres and choices of things to pick and choose from. And generally, it's you find your niche. How did you find what you really were getting hired for? Well, I think a lot of that comes from, like I said, my, my teaching background. So um, and one of my first clients was actually a former teacher in Japan that I met like right at that time where I had some training, I, like I think the demos were being made. And then um, I met him at like an Oktoberfest event in Japan, of all things. And I was, at that time, I was confident enough. That I'm like, hi, Sean. I'm Sean. I'm a voiceover artist. And he's like, oh, really? Um, and it's this guy who's a friend of mine named Drew Badger. He had a company called English Anyone. And he was like, you know, I'm actually trying to delegate the audio work away from myself. So, um how would you like to do it? And then we worked together for seven years after that. Wow. And so it, it was kind of great because we were both like both of our businesses kind of grew organically together. And we both kind of um, definitely a case of iron sharpening iron in that regard. Yeah. What's, what are you working on right now? Right now, um, lots, lots more e-learning stuff. A uh, couple of things for like Amazon training, Zoho. Um, let's see. Lots of... <laughs> Did a very riveting, like, 16-page thing on Corning steel pipe no model numbers and, like, fiber optic cable sizes hey, and gauges. Somebody's got to do it. <laughs> Someone does, and at least I can sound pretty cheerful and not patronizing when I do it. Yeah. Well, well, how, how do you approach copy like that? I mean, everybody has their own way of, you know, to me, it's like, well, I'm a teacher. I'm teaching in a classroom, or depending on how it is. How do you, how do you present yourself with that stuff? What's your technique? Exactly. Well, I mean, you, you kind of balance it between wanting to be sound casual and conversational because that's the big thing, but also being slow enough and mindful of what, like, it, are there any graphics that are going up? What is the order of information being presented? Do I need to add space in between these bullet points and stuff like that? And um, how do I make lists sound interesting when they're like eight or ten items long, you know? Um, so I don't lose them by the fifth point, stuff like that. Yeah. So, and, and again, it's just kind of being sympathetic to the final listener because I don't envy them for having to learn this stuff. So I just want to try and make it enjoyable, uh, for them. It's, it's like, well, at least I got to hang out with Sean for a little bit. He seems like a nice guy. <laughs> you know, we've been doing this show a long time. I've never heard anybody say that. And it makes total sense. Like, yeah, good on you. That's a good point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, I always decide, I used to sell life insurance back when dinosaurs roamed the earth. And, you know, of course that was back in the day where like, okay, you're going to watch another, you know, would there be, be in the brokerage and they would show a training film, like, you know, how to break out of a sales slump. <laughs> and, and I'm like, Oh God, how, who is doing these? And I could do a much better job. So after insurance and after teaching, I'm like, okay, now I get to actually do these. And I've done so many of those. Uh, how many do you think you've done? I mean, you know, how many different uh, types of things have you think you've done? Oh God. Um, I don't want to think about that. <laughs> actually. It, you know, it could, turns into hundreds and hundreds of hours of stuff. You know? mm -hmm. I mean, like I said, in these projects are like, I'd say the minimum is 15 minutes per project. So it's just like that, the, the number of hours you spend, but, if nothing else, it really um, 
like that that client that I mentioned before working for English anyone was just so helpful because that was long form as well and he got me early on saying like hey we don't want a voice like we don't want a VO guy we want just like a friendly like we don't want a VO or we don't want a teacher we just want a friendly guy to kind of represent what this language sounds like right um and so that kind of that got beaten out of me fairly quickly <laughs> and um and it was a great exercise and endurance and cold reading all that stuff that's great if you're just joining us our guest is sean daly who does everything uh and if you've got a question for him throw it in the chat room he would be more than happy to answer your questions about the stuff that he does how do you market yourself i mean in in the early days when we were first online, there was a lot of, you know, you get on the pay to plays, you get all these auditions. Of course, there weren't 10 million people trying to get into voiceover back then. Yep. And it was a little easier to, to get some of these jobs. Now you really have to go out and get them. How do you do that? Um, a couple of different sources. Like I'm still, um, I, I get a lot of uh, work through Bodalgo as well, at least uh, the one online casting site that I'm happy to recommend. It's a German seller. Yeah, for it's, it's I'm like David Hasselhoff or something. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, so that's a great one. And then a lot of um, like personal networking from fellow voice talent who just refer me when they know, they're like, hey, we want a smart young male sound. And they're like, hey, Sean's really good at that. And um some of my connections through Global Voice Acting Academy, like David Rosenthal was the one who helped lead me for that those Prince Charming video game roles. And then another one of our animation coaches, MJ Lalo, helped me get my first cartoon. And um, so, yeah, just kind of uh, working with, um, just kind of putting my name out there and like showing some modic or like some modicum of effort and knowledge and expertise. And then people are like, I think I can trust him with a project. And then of course, email marketing, LinkedIn, that stuff as well. Yeah. And that's the thing about e-learning is you try to make, at least make it sound like, you know, what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, you know, oh, that, that, that whole, that steel pipe gauge thing. Like my eyes glazed over a couple of times. Like I need to get out of the booth for a second, man. I forgot what words mean. Um, <laughs> Yeah, well, it, 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 I think it, it probably helps to have good general cultural literacy of a lot of different things. If you, if you know a lot of trivial things, if you know, you know metallurgy, for example, which my father wanted me to be, a metallurgist. Like, Interesting. Yes, I did not heed his advice on that. Uh, sometimes I'm like, well, maybe he had something there. Uh, but um, but it, it helps to, to you know, you, you study the stuff. I mean, you or or do you just read it cold and go? Eh, I can figure this out. I mean, <laughs> um, kind of throwing myself under the bus. It depends <laughs> on how much time I have to do that, but I at least try to do a cold read at the desk beforehand because I just notice. I mean, the mistakes come far less, and I can kind of experiment with things, and then I have a lot less to edit in the final thing. But you're absolutely right. I mean, this is especially with e-learning stuff, I, I try to tell people that you have to come from a place of draw from your background, right? Because a lot of people think there's like such a set path and not just for e-learning, but voiceover in general, like, oh, I had to go to Juilliard or I had to do that. And it's like, you know, these people come from all walks of life. Like they might not have had that training to start, but at some point they either did trial by fire or they did some classes, you know? So I don't like people to get discouraged if they don't have a background in acting, but you do need to learn a little bit about it. And, and like I said, don't, don't throw away your prior knowledge away. It's going to come up somewhere. Someone's going to have a script, like, even if it's the most niche thing that you're interested in, that's your time to shine. Right? So you never know. Don't throw it away. Yeah, exactly. Prior knowledge. That's a term I haven't heard since I was studying for my teaching degree. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> See, these are all pedag pedagogical terms that we're using here. It never leaves you. I know. Sorry. Right? Um, it, it helps when you're teaching people how to set up their home studios. Like, mm -hmm. let me give you a little tip here about something. Uh, anyway, uh, once again, we're talking with Sean Daly. And uh, tell us a little bit about your studio there. I can, you know, I... I see you've, you know, you've got your bed there. So when you get tired doing your voiceover, you can just flop over. Tell us what you got. Oh, in naps there. all time or all the time. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, it's actually slimmed down quite a bit over the years because um, let me say something right now. 
I have spent thousands on equipment of various mics, uh, interfaces, portable acoustic solutions. And all I really learned from that is that I didn't have to spend that much to get the quality of sound I was looking for. So I encourage you guys to do the same. Like, I mean, it's, uh, but, but back to your question. Um, so right now we'll start with this guy. It's the, um, it's the Gefell M930. Ooh. So it's a, it's a lovely German mic that I love very, very much. And um, once I read Paul Strequerda's blog about it, I was like, that's the mic. That, that, that's the aspirational one that you are going to work your ass off for. And now you um, sound like Paul. It's amazing. Yeah, I know. Just without the accent. <laughs> That's the highest compliment. But um, and then um, since the shock mount for that mic was another three hundred dollars, I just decided to go with a Rycote because um, I've got a lot of experience with that. Uh, like I was trying to say, or one of my first mics was actually the Rode NT1, and I think I sent you a comparison track, George, and you're like, I think you're like, man, that sounds a lot like a four sixteen. So I claim that I was the first person that made you say that. Patent pending, patent pending. Um, <laughs> no, I, I still believe it. We did another shootout. Oh, yeah, on the, like, on the audio suite. Absolutely. Yeah, and then we came with the same conclusion. It's pretty it's, damn It's so similar. weird. I was like, they're not even the same diaphragm. So yeah, it's totally like, I don't different. understand how that works. But um, but it's great. I'm all for, um, I know if, if people listen to the podcast, the VO Meter podcast, we get a lot of flack for just being total gear, you knows. And, um, <laughs> but uh, it's it's calmed down a lot, it, you know, it, like we just had high hopes and we just wanted to try out all the things. But anyways, so the in addition to that, gear purchase is definitely my favorite segment. Questionable sure. gear purchase. It was like, it's like, it happens to everyone, but nobody <laughs> talks about it. You know, nobody's like willing to throw themselves under the bus about it. Now we actually have to have people submit their stories because we've actually settled on some things um, and, and we're not really changing it, you know. Good um, for you. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of things that I still lust after these days. Like, um, I'd love I'd love an Apollo unit at some point. Um, the the new Austrian auto mics seem really nice or Austrian audio mm -hmm. mics seem really nice for the price. But um there's a time and a place for that, you know? So but in addition to that, let's take you on a little journey. Sure. Mm -hmm. All right. So we've got my favorite interface this is from spl it's called the Ooh, creon nice. um it it's very similar to the audion id22 in uh in its form factor and its routing capabilities but honestly the only real difference for me is that it's got um kind of a warmer internal preamp than the audion like still those are great but i mean it is it was kind of transparent a little bassy and it just sounded a little less clear on my voice like a little less warm um, and then it's also got like a really handy, like 70 Hertz high pass filter right on it. So that's like well below my voice. So it's kind of, and it doesn't really negatively affect the audio if I decide to have it on. Um, so I tend to do that a lot. Um, and then let's see, let me do that one more time. Sorry guys. Okay. Yeah, Cause that mic, uh, yeah. Like any super high quality condenser mic, it picks up low frequency, like a, like, you know, like a, like a, like a sponge. A yeah. Yeah. And so uh <laughs> you guys saw for a minute um my little vocal booth to go. It was actually one of their earlier models, the the hanging acoustic booth. Yeah, um, show us that again. Show us that again. Okay. For those of you listening to the podcast, he's now showing us his whole vocal booth to Yeah, go. I installed one of those one time for somebody. Mm. And I admit, like I I talked to uh to a deal about that. I was like, you know, it's really hard to hang that thing. Like, you know. Yeah, so tough. I it's it's actually got like a, a custom built PVC frame in it. And we were actually really smart. Uh, my dad helped me build it. And we we're like, oh, wait, if we do the math right, we literally made all of the support beams the exact same length. So it doesn't matter where it goes when we disassemble or reassemble. We don't have to like label it or anything. Um, smart. So, smart. Yeah. Wicked smart. <laughs> upper left, <laughs> upper right. No, no, no codes. Um, <laughs> But then uh, in addition to that, just for my own, like, I didn't even really need it, but I just kind of wanted some, I, I wanted to look a little bit nicer in there. So I got some like steel gray colored auto mute absorption sheets. So um, 
And then I kind of just hung them up on the PVC ceiling with uh, some really strong zip ties. So, so yeah. And George, it's got the sort or the seal of approval from George. So good enough for me. <laughs> it was a good. It's a good design. I've installed one of those. It was. It was a little more difficult to put it up than I thought. Um, just kind of like the whole idea is like there's nothing on the floor, so it seems like a, I mean it seems very clever, and then it's kind of a minimalistic kind of idea. But in the end of the day, just having it standing on the floor might actually be just more practical. You need a really tall ceiling for this to work. <laughs> <laughs> right. And it's surprisingly heavy, too. I had to try yeah. and assemble it myself in my old Japanese shoebox apartment. It was not fun. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, we're talking with Sean Daly. You got a question for him. Throw it in the Facebook chat room, and Jeff Holman will get that question to us in a little bit. Now, one of the things that you have, because... I, I, you know, when I was thinking about when I wanted to have you on the show, is I see on Facebook an awful lot. I'm on it way too much. Yeah, <laughs> I, it, I, I think these days we're all on it too much. Although I'm sure some people are like, enough. You know, my wife is like, you know, watching every video that has ever come out by anybody. You gotta see this. No, it's okay. I'm, I've got other things to do right now. Uh, but this is. You you've got this this document, I guess, because you you've 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 answered so many. I see you in you know in Vo Tech Talk in there a bunch of times. And there's what are some of the other groups you're in? Because I it's like all of them, but <laughs> <laughs> well. I don't I don't follow them all as frequently as I used to. Because I mean I do have to help manage two of the ones for for Global Voice Acting Academy. But right. um, but yeah, I mean it's. If you've been to enough of them, there's a lot of the same questions. <laughs> no. <laughs> and we're, and now it's like, it's daily. It's so, like, we were we were just talking about before the show that was like, within 24 hours, three people asked, what's the best mic for voiceover? And I was like, I literally, I was just like, just scroll just a little bit, please. <laughs> yes, you're a beautiful snowflake, but so is everyone else. <laughs> That's the problem with the Facebook groups is they don't really highlight the search feature. It mm. is there is one there. It's just kind of relegated off to the side. It's not that obvious. No. And in a lot of these, you know, more classic forums, there's kind of like you have to kind of be vetted sometimes to even join them. And you have to actually, you know, read a fact and say I've read it, you know, and that's mm. the stuff that's in there. So and then people the complain groups, like I can't access it. I was like, it's not on the mobile version. Use your desktop, right. please. <laughs> like it's uh Anyway, like, sorry, sidebar. Like, anyway. No, no, absolutely. No. Why can't I get them to read? But, <laughs> um, <laughs> so what what so so what I hear is you you you've answered every question that's ever been asked there or what? No, well, I mean, it's it's a compulsion I have. Like it's just, you know, and then it used to be so if you guys don't mind, I can share Please. my screen. Sure. Uh, actually show you. I can't tell like. you how many times you've answered a question so I didn't have to do it. <laughs> yeah. I, I so think I'm that's the like, thing. It's like, oh, Sean took care of I that one. Right? Click like. <laughs> that's like. awesome. Hey, paying it forward, my like. man. You guys have helped me more times than I can count. Um, like. But but anyways, like uh, uh, about a year or two ago, a couple members from the GVA membership program, um, Becky and Michelle, they asked me, hi guys, they asked me to do a workshop on kind of finding and vetting a coach for voiceover. And then I was like, I kind of wrote down a list of all of the coaches I'd worked with over the years at that point. And it was like 30 at that point, because <laughs> I like to learn. Um, and so that became its own, like that, that was the spine of the document. Cause I just wanted to show, I was like, here's all these people. I, I learned something from them. Hopefully you can too. And then I was like, well, if they don't know anything about coaches, they probably don't know anything about home studio. So here's some things about that. Here's all the mics that I've seen people use. Like here's, and, and that's the thing is it's like, people are so eager to find What's the best insert something for me? You Can know? I link that from my website? <laughs> yes, please. Absolutely. Because I have it. an FAQ on my site and it is quite old. Not that a <laughs> lot of it's still not relevant, but it's it's pretty dated. It'd be nice to have a new resource like that. I just haven't had the energy I mean, to do and it. It's not fancy. Like I didn't format. I mean, well, it's formatted, but I didn't add like pictures or anything like right. that uh, but it's just kind of like a bunch of the resources that i found helpful like there's a whole bunch of free and inexpensive resources at the end because i'm like 
it's like you are already answer asking the wrong question if you don't know anything else about voiceover learn about the industry first like get a lay of the land i mean there's uh, there's D. Bradley Baker's site. There's I want to be a voice actor.com. He does an amazing job. Bob Bergen has a wonderful FAQ as well. Um, Stacy Stahl from in, uh, in Both Ears has Get Started in VO. And hey, Peter O'Connell has one too. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, like the, the voiceover exam, right, I believe. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that's in the document as well. Um, but <laughs> But that's the thing. Like, I think George called me the king of let me Google that for you once. I was like, eh, it's a little appropriate. <laughs> but but the thing is, is like, I will provide you with the information, but I'm not going to hold your hand through it. And I'm not going to tell you buy this specific thing because I don't want you to come back to me and be like, hey, it was wrong. I was like, well, maybe you didn't do enough research, you know. Um, and so part of what I'm trying to show people is that there is no it's like the old Reese's commercial. There's no wrong way to be a voiceover, right? Like there's different, like we can all start from the most humble of beginnings, but. How about Fiverr? Can I use Fiverr? No, don't do that. that actually, there is a wrong <laughs> no, way. So <laughs> sorry, sorry. There is a wrong way. It's a little Asterisk. Asterisk. Thank you. <laughs> except Fiverr. There's no wrong way, except what? But, uh, <laughs> and, but again, it's just like, what kind of, like I said, learn the lay of the land. And for me, I admit, I it, this was there were not as many resources available when I started, but all it took was changing my search from voice acting to voice over for that to change, right? I was like, oh, I, I asked the wrong question, right? Mm-hmm. And so that kind of sent me down the rabbit hole of all of those resources that I mentioned before, like voiceover extra, voiceover body shop, or eWebs back in the day. Um, and, and something that I try to encourage people is to just like research is free for the most part. Right. I mean, like you, there are so many free resources available from so many generous and knowledgeable voice talent in just about any genre you could be interested in. Like, I mean, you want to do more e-learning stuff? Kim Handysides has a great blog about that. You want to do more audiobook stuff? Ann Richardson and, uh, oh God, I can't remember her name, but Narrator's Roadmap have wonderful sites about that, but, um, and which are included in the document, I believe. So, <laughs> um, so as you can see, there's just so, the information is out there. And a lot of people think it's more valuable to go direct to the source. But honestly, I find that that's inconsiderate of people's time. And it shows you're shooting yourself in the foot because you're showing that you're not willing to put in any effort to pursue this. Ooh. And that's why so many like el- vo- the voiceover elite get upset when they see the same questions again and over again, because it's over, accessible. Yeah. Right. Like it's out there. Right. Just find my resource doc. <laughs> yeah. Well, and of course we've seen the answers so many times. It's like, what? What this isn't common knowledge, and exactly. And but how does that apply to me, Dan? That's right. Like... <laughs> That's right. All right. Hey, if you're just joining us once again, we're talking with Sean Daly about you know everyday voiceover stuff. I mean, we talk to celebrities and we talk to the people that are doing the big time stuff. Sean is a you are a lunch pail voice actor, which is the best kind because you work all the time. As opposed to what's the next big commercial that's going to come along. Uh, and we really appreciate your insight on all this. And if you've got a question for Sean, please throw it in the Facebook chat room right this minute. Because we're going to get to those in just a couple of seconds. But we're going to take a quick break right now. And we'll be back with Sean Daly and more stuff right after these messages. You're, You're watching, watching VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese sandwich. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Look what you made me do. Power 103.9. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Uh, Okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. 
Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge reward. Until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the voiceover body shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. What question do we get most often? Far and away, it's how do I even get started in voiceover? And we have a great answer to that question. Take the voheroes.com free getting started in VO course. You heard right. It's free, and it's available online 24-7 at gettingstartedinvo.com. That's gettingstartedinvo.com. If you've been watching VOBS and thinking that you need to get in gear and start your own voiceover career, this is the course you should start with. You'll learn about the vocal skills you need, the storytelling skills you need, the equipment you need, the business skills you need, and the mindset you need to have all in one single comprehensive online course taught by VO Heroes David H. Lawrence the 17th. This course won the Backstage Reader's Choice Award four years in a row. And again, there's no charge. It's absolutely free. Want to take it? Of course you do. Getting started in VO.com. That's getting started in VO.com. So our good friend Harlan Hogan is on vacation in Maine. Isn't it gorgeous? Anyway, he wanted me to tell you that he hasn't missed doing any work while he's on vacation, hanging out on somebody's yacht, because he's got his porta booth with him. This is a great unit. It makes it easy for you to travel on the road, and it's easy to take apart and put together. All you have to do is zip it up or unzip it in this particular case, and it all just folds up into a nice, neat carrying case. The Porta Booth Plus, plus the Porta Booth Pro, which you see right here. The Porta Booth Pro, the bigger model, is $369.99. The Plus, $199.99. And the bag is on sale for $49.95, but you can get it in a combo for $248.95. Go over to voiceoveressentials.com right now and get your Porta Booth Plus or Pro. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're listening to VoiceOver Body Shop, VOBS.TV. Ah, the wonder of editing. Anyway, uh, we're talking with Sean Daly here on VoiceOver Body Shop. And, uh, you know, this is this is the good stuff because this is the stuff that voice actors, you know, people who are trying to get into the business really need to hear because everybody thinks it's show business. It's not show business. It's work. But it's business business. It's business business, but it's it, but it's fun business. Mm-hmm. At least the fun stuff is fun. Uh, anyway, l- let me ask you this, because we got a bunch of questions from our, our voluminous audience here. What do you think you would have liked to have known when you started back then? <laughs> because obviously you've all written them down in that document. This is all that stuff now. I, I wish I could just give the document to myself. <laughs> myself. Yes. Wouldn't you love to just have that document? <laughs> Oh, man. Um, Golden ticket. But anyways, um, just to be patient. And I mean, I'm honestly like people who know me say that, like, I've got the patience of a saint and all that. But it's just like, even so, even if you got all the talent in the world, there are no guarantees. Right. Like, there's always there's so many arbitrary reasons why you might or might not be booking. And it just frankly, it just takes time. Like, and I, I equate it to, to learning a language or like fitness gains or whatever. You don't really notice any real results until six months, a year or two years down the line. So, so many people who are trying to like make money as quickly as possible. I remember somebody was commenting on, I think my, either my road NT1 or Steinberg review video on YouTube. And they're like, can you recommend a good mic? And I was like, all right, they're probably coming in in a budget. So I stuck to like the 100 to 150 ones. And they're like, that's too expensive. I was like, well, then you got to wait. <laughs> wait and yeah. save. And then I was like, and do you have any training? Like, should you even be investing in this right now? And that's the step that everyone wants to skip. And I'm just like, 
I think part of it is because they don't want to be told that they're not good and that it's going to take them longer to do this. When I was just like, I mean, I, I've done workshops and stuff like that for, for teaching people about this. And I, I've worked with people who've come from like, say, radio backgrounds. And I was like, well, maybe you should book a session with a coach. She's like, why? I've done this for years. I was like, it's not the same thing. <laughs> like, and there are uh, applicable skills, but it's not the same. And, um, and like, it's, like I said, I feel like people, once they reach a certain point, they're afraid to learn new stuff. And like, like I was saying before, the whole six months to one or two years thing, spend six months to one or two years on your performance. All right, that's great. Now you got to spend about six months learning the tech. Then you got to spend about six months learning how to market yourself, right? So it's such an, it's an iterative process, right? Yeah. No so shortcuts. Can, no shortcuts. Thank you. It's like, <laughs> I'm an, I'm an eight year overnight success. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> it, it takes time. And there's, of course, there are ways to save money and to invest wisely. And honestly, that's what I also wish I did is that I, like, Earlier on, I said you have to kind of immerse yourself in the world, but you you also have to not drop the other, like the mental, physical, like health balances of life, right? You can't get so in the weeds of whatever you're pursuing that you forget to live because acting is all about the representation of life. And if you don't have a life, you can't represent it. Like, so, so don't forget to, to go outside, to, to spend time with friends and with digitally as it is now, but to do those things that feed your soul and take care of yourself because yes, like showbiz or biz biz is not easy and you have to make a lot of sacrifices. You have to work long hours and for many, um, for many months or years with no real guarantee of making it. And you have to be okay with that. Yep. You have to be okay with the risk. You have to be okay with failure. And you have to be, like we were saying before, like sort of off camera. It's just like so many people are looking for other people to tell them and to guide them step by step. Well, mentorship is important. And you should be very selective with your mentors and your support group. But at some point, you need to take autonomy of your career, of your dream. Because no one is going to fight for you as hard as you will, right? So you Ac have to. <laughs> Sorry, no, no, <laughs> it's going. an excellent point. I, your, 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 your reverendship. Uh, it's um, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, you're, I think you're right on with that. Uh, the, people don't have the patience. They, they think I got to get, you know, I got to take the find the, the short way into doing this. And I think the problem that people don't understand is that the key to it is you have to be unique. And you don't follow everybody else's path. You've got to find the way that's going to work for you. And so you can take, yeah, I mean, you, you have lots of choices and stuff, but I appreciate that. Uh, we got lots of questions from our, our audience here. Would you like to tackle some of those? Yes, please. Let's do it. Mr. Whitham. All right. First one in the queue. Thanks to Jeff Holman in the chat room. Who's keeping it all flowing. Bradley T. Bosley says, hey, Sean, I'm an amateur voice actor looking to get much deeper into it. Well, you definitely have a document to read there. <laughs> yes, you do. I was going to say that Enjoy. might be answered by that. <laughs> Next, no. Uh, <laughs> how do you keep your how do you keep your confidence up, and how do you stay positive when you just don't get the role? Well, very often you don't even know that, right? Unless something airs that you um, that you audition for, right? I actually happened the other day. I was listening on the radio. I was like, oh, I auditioned for that. That's what they wanted. Okay. <laughs> and you can't take it personally because like I said, so much of this is arbitrary, right? And um, and I admit, I have a very unique sound. Like I'm in my mid thirties, but I could play a 14 year old pretty easily, um, you know? And if you listen to a lot of commercials, there's not a lot of intelligent teen voiceovers, right? So maybe that's not the area that I'm best suited for. But, but again, the confidence comes from knowledge and practice. And uh, that's why training is so important because when we start out, we have no idea of what, like, of so many things. Like, I believe it or not, I was a total neophyte when it came to audio tech. Like, when I, when uh, 
like Dan gave me my first audio consult. I was using a Blue Yeti Pro in a Harlan Hogan Porta Booth Plus. And the first thing he told me is like, I can hear your refrigerator behind you. I was like, well, shit. <laughs> but, uh, but thank you for not making me feel like an idiot. He was just matter of fact about it. Right. And it's just like, but it, it like the more I learned, the more I researched, the more I became comfortable with that because I, I learned all the usual culprits. I learned a system that worked for me. Like, like I really had a kind of shotgun approach where I tried a lot of different things. And like, for example, I have pretty much like I have Studio One, Reaper, Audacity, Osin Audio, Twisted Wave and Audition on my computer. I use <laughs> two of them. Right. But I like knowing enough about them that I can help someone else if if necessary. Right. Or at least understand what people are talking about. Or if a client, for whatever reason, asks for that, I can provide that. And the two right? that you use are. Oh, that would be Twisted Wave. For the bulk of it and then occasionally if i need multi-track studio one so gotcha all right i tried reaper and even after working with like mike delgadio just oh he's just like scares the crap out of me i'm not gonna lie it's just so <laughs> there's so much in the weeds it's uber like, geeky uber yeah, geeky. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean he, he did a webinar for us recently i was like it can do that <laughs> face melt ark of the covenant style like, um <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right. But we had two more questions. Yeah. We got one from Rich Brennan, attorney at law. Right. Uh, yeah. Do you work with a studio or from a home studio? Well, clearly you work from your home studio there. Home studio. Yeah. Exclusively. Right and honestly, like right now, um, I think everyone needs a competitive setup. Like it does not have to be, well, expensive is relative. But I think if you spend between $500 and $1,000 on everything to start, you'll be okay. Like if, but you, you have to be very selective in the, in the mic, in the interface, and um, the acoustic setup you have. And ideally, if you have a good closet, that would be a great place to start. Yeah, closet. But in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, so many jokes about that. Sorry, flashbacks. <laughs> used my mom's walk-in closet for a year and there was so it's like it's he in the closet again that boy just can't go in and out every time he wants to you know as like <laughs> but um again don't fear the tech and don't fear what you don't know right so if you don't know how to do an accent talk with an accent coach if you don't know how to set this up talk to someone like dan and george you will save so much time so much effort and so much anguish if you just invest in expert opinions rather than trying to rely on the wisdom of the crowd because I see it over and over again. Too many options. Everyone, and there's so many contradictory opinions. Like, that's why long ago I was just like, you know, there, there is no best option. There's a crap ton of good options. So figure out your budget and then go from there. Research and make an informed decision. Like I was saying before, people need to have confidence in their own choices because so much of what we do, I mean, in acting, they call it making choices for a reason. Like you have to be decisive and confident about how you approach copy because if you're not, we can hear that. So be confident, be competent and work with people who will get you there more quickly. That makes a lot of sense. And by the way, here's the here's here's a twenty for you. And <laughs> sounds like you said that. Next question. This one's a kind of interesting tilt, um, kind of personal. Um, from Dean T. Moody. Hey Sean, I think you and I met when you and your dad were coming to old radio show recre uh, recreations. Mm -hmm. um, is that a genre of VO that you grew up with? Did your dad get you into it? Oh, that's an issue. Yeah. Uh, so Dean, we've, we've done a couple of workshops together. Um, uh, uh, I, I guess I just always liked the idea of audio dramas and he, we would actually listen once we got serious. Um, when we would go on long drives together, he would show me some old like Sherlock shows or murder mysteries and stuff like that. And, um, and honestly, it's something that I'd like to do is more of as well. Um, so I don't know. I just like, like as someone who had a theater background in, in school and college, um, 
that that idea was always fascinating to me and getting to see people actually play with those noise making props on stage was really was really special <laughs> yeah Fo foley is a, is is a lost art i think and people need to relearn that one yeah. um this question here from scott chambers uh as many of us have been quarantined for an extended period of time how are you staying sane when you're not working some days I feel like I need to add extra padding to my booth and not for acoustic treatment. Any personal <laughs> tips? Easy. I'm not. <laughs> but uh, anyway, <laughs> but absolutely. And, and I think it, it happens to all of us. Like we all have our good weeks or good days and our dark days. Right. And sometimes it's the same day. Um, so it has been very stressful for, for me. Like um, some of you guys know, like I hadn't seen my girlfriend in like four months because like we, we, we live in separate houses and we just didn't want to have that risk. And mm. um, we did actually see each other last weekend though, which was great. It was a little weird. It was bittersweet because we were socially distancing. We wore masks and gloves and kind of oh, brought our own wow. snacks and drinks. <laughs> um, oh, wow. But it was better than nothing right yeah. it, it's just kind of you adapt and we actually did something through gvaa for a while and we're probably going to do it again in a month where we actually did these weekly fireside chats for just an opportunity for people to come in and just chat and vent maybe we talk about vo stuff maybe we don't but that wasn't the point it was just to be like hey hello fellow humans how are you <laughs> like you know check in <laughs> um and like and, and share our, our share our successes, share our concerns, um, and just enjoy each other's company. You know? Yeah. We've been so, doing uh, yeah, yeah, we've been doing that with World Voices too. We have a weekly lounge, actually twice a week. And that's I, it's important for everybody to stay in touch. I'm like, I can't believe well, yes, I can believe Zoom happy hours are a thing because people are alcoholics. But anyways, <laughs> but it's that yeah. you're right, it's that social thing that we all really strive for i mean like i believe it or not i'm a bit of an introvert so i felt like i kind of adjusted to this fairly well um but i have my bad days too and like i said you just try to maintain contact with other people in whatever format you can like i try to i try to talk with my girlfriend on facebook or zoom like once a day and then we play we're big nerds so we play weekly dungeon and dragon sessions over zoom it's great <laughs> um which is Hey, and that's another great tip is like, if you want to mix community theater and improv, D&D &D guys, I mean, the whole process is called creating a character and they literally give you everything you need. What is this person's flaws, their ideals, what are like their background? It's amazing. <laughs> it's pretty brilliant. Uh, yeah, <laughs> really. All right. We got time for one more question here. Let's see. Uh, Tremaine Kendrick Mosley has a great question here. Trey, how you doing, man? Yeah, it's just. Who are your VO inspirations, if any? Why do you love to do what you do? Awesome. Um, well, first off, I'm really glad you gave me a segue because I actually wrote a list of my mentors. Oh, because good. I think it's so important. Like, because I mean, a lot of people wondered, like, Sean, why the heck are you give all this knowledge out and stuff like that? As like, this is my giving back to the industry that has been so kind to me. And so I just want to do a quick shout out to. Uh, to Christina Malizia and David Rosenthal, who took me under their wing over at Global Voice Acting Academy, um, Carol Monda, Brian Summer, and Steven Reesberg, and Joyce Castiano, some of the coaches that we've worked with over there who just taught me so many things about, about commercial and animation and audiobook and video game voiceover. And of course, Pat Fraley, um, you know, fellow Seattleite, he's come up here many times and I was really flattered when someone saw a picture of us together and he's like, Lou, you look like you could be his son. I was like, I can only, I can only dream. But, um, <laughs> but then people like Trey, who've just been, who've inspired me with their generosity and my good buddy, David Toback, who just showed me just how, who really kind of got me to wrap my hand, head around the business side and kind of sticking up for my own rates and how to fight for those. And Tim Page, who's just like, knocking it out of the park with, with, with whatever genre he sets his mind to. And then also he both sold me his booth. So that is, that has been a big help. Um, and then uh, people like Eliza Jane Snyder and Eliza Simpson, some of my favorite accent coaches to work with. And, and then just kind of going back to like actual stars and stuff like that. Um, I'm a big fan of superheroes. I can't tell if you can see it, but that's like my whole, 
uh, nerd wall <laughs> behind me. So it's kind of a combination of uh, Spider-Man, Batman, and He-Man from the Masters of the Universe. And, and that was something, like, those were the stories that I grew up with. And people who just do, who have this strong, these strong ideals and good for goodness sake and like having great power and doing good things with it. Right. right. And so, and of course, Skeletor is fun to do. Right. I mean, who knew? <laughs> um, but it's like I, those people inspired me because I just want to be a part of those stories. Right. Like I want to inspire people the way that I was inspired. And so I hope that I hope that answered. I think that answers it pretty well. Well, Sean, this has been fabulous. It's always great to talk to other voice actors who you know who really are doing the job and doing the stuff day in and day out. And we really appreciate all the stuff that you've been throwing out there and and helping other people with and getting that information out. And good luck with the your career and everything you do. Likewise, and same to you guys. If you have any tech questions, if you need help setting it up. George has a home studio now.com. They both do audio consults, whatever you need. Talk to an expert, right? It'll save you the time, the headache, and you won't have to filter through the wisdom of the crowd. Okay. Cause it doesn't <laughs> exist. <laughs> <laughs> Every voice is different. Every studio is different. Thanks for being with us, Sean. Real pleasure guys. Thank uh, you. Alrighty. All right. Well, George and I'll be right back to wrap this up right after these important messages. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem, VOBS.TV. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Well, it's time to talk about one of our lovely sponsors, and that is Source Elements. Maybe you've heard of them. Maybe you've just been dabbling in voiceover and you've already been told you have to have Source Connect. <laughs> Maybe that's happened to you. I don't know, but man, I'll tell you, everybody is using Source Connect to do remote recordings of voiceover all over the world. It's been a tool that's been in use for well over 10 years, but now due to COVID and working from home, it has never been more important, and so many genres of voiceover are using this tool now from, from what we you know normally would expect, which are like the high-budget commercial national ad campaigns, things like that, but even audiobooks are being produced this way now. So um, you definitely want to have that ready to go. The best thing to do is to get signed up with a free trial. You can get a 15-day free trial, um, and what you essentially want to do is kind of get it on, get all the setup going on. There's quite a few things to set up to get it working. Uh, but once it is set up, it is very, very easy to use. I mean, it is just as easy as Skype and Zoom. 
to connect to another studio. But it is the devil's in the details. So if you want to get set up easily, there's FAQs and videos and all kinds of stuff that I've compiled on my site at georgethetech.com. Check out the Source Connect resource page on there and uh, get yourself up and running. So when you're asked, do you have Source Connect? Even if you haven't taken the plunge and bought the license or subscribed, you'll be able to say yes, because you've gotten it running and you've gone through the setup. Anyway, Source Connect, get it, have it, be ready. Don't say no to that next big job or opportunity when it comes up. I'll be right back to wrap up right after this. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. And we're back to say goodbye for now. Uh, Sean was great. I, you know, it's always yeah. great to talk to people that know the business of this business and to realize it's not show business, it's business business. Anyway, uh, next week on this very show, we've got Tech Talk number 37, which we're going to get to in just a couple of minutes here. So stay tuned for that if you're watching it live. Uh, and we'd love your tech questions for that. But um, that's what we do next week. And then we'll have another great guest. And one of the other great things we have is donors, people who have been contributing to the show, aside from our sponsors, yep. who understand that it's important to support the work that we do. And who are those people this particular week? The names that are lit up in green today are Uncle Roy at Antland Productions. You may have heard of him. Maybe. Grand Spicer. Hey, Graham. Christy Burns. Michael Kearns. Mike Gordon. Harlow Rodriguez. Martha Kahn. Lee Penny Lee. and Don Griffith. All righty. Names that I have read over and over and over and over on this show. Which is why they keep Cast contributing. Cast something. <laughs> we really appreciate Hopefully, it. Hopefully, we really appreciate them um, subscribing. And I mean, you can literally donate a buck uh, on there every month on a subscription, and we're going to read your name. So it's a no-brainer. Um, yeah. Anyway, but we appreciate it. And it yeah. really, uh, it's really just shows that there's just long ongoing support of, of, of fans that we just, it just, I don't know. It just feels good. We really appreciate it. Thank you. We love you guys. All righty. Uh, we need to thank our sponsors too, because they're really important. Like Harlan Hogan's voiceover essentials. Voiceover extra. Source elements. Boheroes.com. Voiceactorwebsites.com. And JMC demos. And Jeff Holman for doing a great job in the chat room tonight. Our magnificent yes. technical director sitting there in her garage out there in Burbank, California. Sue Merlino getting it done tonight. And, of course, Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Lee Penny. All right. Well, Tech Talk's coming up next. We appreciate you joining us here, and, uh, and we love your comments. We love your participation. But mostly, we just love you guys. Thanks for being with us all these years, and we'll continue to do it as long as you're out there and want to listen. Uh, that's going to do it for us on this segment. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. I'm glad you remembered that. And this is voiceover. Body shop. Or V-O-B-S. <laughs> right, we'll see you in a bit. Was that pause too pregnant? <laughs> 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 <laughs>